gamers. Today we're going to make a new guide, a new kind of guide. I haven't made one of these before. So we're gonna do the first one and you guys can let me know if you liked it, enjoyed it, and I'll do it for the other sims as well. So this guide is not gonna be a build order guide. It's not gonna cover certain matchups. It's going to basically be everything you should or need to know about English as a sim. So what I'm gonna be doing is for example discussing the bonuses that uh, English have, uh, how are you supposed to play English, which play styles are good with English in general, and what unique things English have. Yeah, let's go from the let's go from the beginning. So English is one of the easier uh, easier sims, probably the easiest sims uh, to get it with with uh, French. So if you're new to the game, English is a very good kind of like introductory introduction sim, um, where you know the the mechanics of the sim and the macro and the micro of the sim are not that complicated, and it's a very good sim to kind of start with, whether you or your friends. Uh, it kind of works. Uh, it works either way. First thing you need to know is every Civ has civilization bonuses and one of the more important or most important civilization bonuses for English is whenever the opponent is in the range of your town centers, outposts, towers and keeps, it increases your attack speed of nearby units by 20%. So. This is huge. I mean, if you doesn't matter if you play RTS or other games, 20% attack speed on all your units in that area is insane. Like, it's a huge, huge buff. That's why you see, like, uh, streamers, high-level players, or even your opponents, whenever they play English, they like to build a, uh, bring a villager forward and build a tower when they're pushing. It's because if you build a tower and you're fighting the opponent in front of their base, you will still get the buff as long as their enemy units are near towers. So whenever you play English, you should always try to uh, fight around your keeps, your town centers, your towers, because you will get a massive, massive attack speed uh, buff for all your units. And this also works on siege, so it's quite important. It works on uh, melee units like infantry and, and cavalry. It works on range units and it works on siege. Now. This bonus uh, has a unique upgrade in keep, so this is only for English. They have an upgrade that increases this bonus to 50%, right? It's 250, not by 50, right? I'm very bad with numbers. Uh, chat will, uh, uh, will let me know, but uh, one of the most important things when you do hit the castle with English and when you get a keep, uh, 250%, yeah. Whenever you get a keep with English, this is the number one upgrade you should get because this bonus goes from 20% attack speed to 50% attack speed. So obviously this is a massive, massive buff uh, to your army. And even though your economy in English as English in Castle is not that great compared to some of the other civs, uh, this is why you should play maybe more defensive in Castle. Um, or in general, you know, you should always play around towers and keeps and TCs because it's just a massive buff and I feel like it's often underused um, because sometimes people just choose to not fight in the in the in the range of the aura right when you definitely definitely should so this is probably the biggest thing that you should learn as an English player and that you should understand and be aware uh, in your games uh, farms so farms for English are 50% cheaper to construct uh, which means they are 37 wood each farm and also not only that but farms will gather uh, fa uh, farms that are around mills so you know whenever you build a mill there's like the orange uh, influence zone whenever you build farms near mills you also gather 50 percent 15 percent bonus in dark 20 percent feudal 25 percent castle and 30 percent in imperial faster so this is why whenever you see English, they always build farms. Uh, so whenever you see English, they always have their farms neatly placed around the mill, which, you know, sometimes other civs just kind of blast the, the farms or whatever they can. Uh, it doesn't matter for placement as much. But for English, it's very important that you fit at least eight farms um, around, your, around your mill. And obviously this scales as it goes, as you can see, by 5% each age. So English farming economy is quite insane, quite good. It's the best in the game. And this is why uh, English players don't really go out on the map to gather berries or gather deer or gather boar. Um, 
because they can transition very early on uh, into the farms because like you know they're 50 percent cheaper and you can base your food economy off of farms instead of running around the map and exposing your villagers and this makes english one of the civs that uh, can play very defensive where your whole economy defending is focused around defending your wood line and your gold because your food is usually under tcs and very defensive uh in farms so that's something to consider uh, another thing i want to mention regarding farms is late game english is one of the best if not the best civ and the reason for that is they have an upgrade called enclosures uh which provides i think one gold every three seconds and again i might be off of numbers per farm so this is quite insane because as english you don't really need to to trade in the late game like some of the other civs if the map is completely dry of gold you can actually just make like 70 farms and you will have uh, insane amounts of economy uh, around your base. So um, yeah, it makes English great for late game because you can basically spam knights, men at arms forever and you'll have gold for, for siege. Um, so yeah, English farms, very good. These are all the bonuses that basically have three different bonuses, I guess, the being cheaper, uh, faster gathering rate and also being able to produce gold in Imperial. Uh, Vanguard Men at Arms. So this is the English is the only sieve that can produce Men at Arms in Dark Age. Uh, it is sometimes used to kind of cheese your opponent. You open it with barracks and you send Men at Arms to their gold. It's not that great, so you don't really see this one too much. But you know, there it is. Sometimes maybe on water maps you can open Men at Arms and try to harass the enemy docks or something. But that's about it. Uh, one bonus that a lot of people actually are not aware of, and I'm sure I actually wanted to make a poll in my stream because I guarantee you so many people don't know about this bonus, is that English men at arms produce 50% faster than other civs. Uh, and this was, I think, recently added, and it kind of snuck in without a lot of people paying attention to this change. Um, but yeah, they produce men at arms 50% faster, so they can actually print men at arms in, in castle or imperial quite effectively. Uh, another thing that's unique to English is they're the only civs, uh, they're the only civ that uh, their workers, aka villagers, uh, equip short bows so they can, you know, actually shoot arrows at the opponent. Uh, this makes it, you know, it is a it is a good thing for English, right? So whenever you get raided, uh, if you actually pull the villagers and do a quick auto attack with like twenty villagers, you can like one shot a horseman, which other civs can't really do. So that's another th cool thing that you can use and abuse as English. There's also uh, a lot of cheeses where you pull five workers and start with English and go snipe their workers on their side of the map because you have bows and they don't, so you can just kite forever. Um, but yeah, this is pretty useful in defending the raids or maybe aiding your army when you're getting attacked. Uh, it's not insane amounts of DPS, but it is some DPS and, uh, well, they're ranged, so why not? Um... Another thing that is strictly unique to English is their keeps can produce um, military units. Right, uh, that's a good point in the chat. Uh, the villagers being able to equip bows makes it extremely hard to tower rush English. So this is why almost no one tower rushes English, because if an English player sees you tower rushing, they can just pull villagers and kill your spearman or kill your worker making uh, or villager making the, the outpost. So uh, another thing for English is their keeps can produce military units. This is, uh, it's useful in some situations, but the most useful part about this is a lot of civs need to make, like when they reach castle, they need to make a siege workshop. But with English, it's a very good idea that as you're entering castle to either have enough stone or your mining stone to make a keep because you can upgrade uh, Citadel of Networks, which is, um, Oh, I can't point it. Which is the town center outpost towers increase attack speed. Goes from 20 to 50%. You can upgrade that and keep. And then you can also produce whatever units you want, but mainly siege. So you wouldn't need a siege workshop. You can just produce a trebuchet or a mangonel or a springle from your keep. So that's something to keep in mind. And I feel like this is one thing that a lot of people uh, forget, even at the high level. Where sometimes they're getting attacked or all in, they put a keep and then they build a siege workshop instead of just producing out of the keep. 
And the last unique thing for English uh, that you can see here at least, which I'll show you a little bit more, is their ships are 10% uh, cheaper to produce. Now this has changed recently. Let's enter a game actually. So their ships uh, are cheaper 10%. Uh, this is very nice for the water maps and this is why we've seen English more viable in water maps because they can uh, you know, get their fishing economy up faster. But if you also engage in that like all water war where you're both producing galleys or you're producing hulks, yours are 10% cheaper. And that adds over a longer period of time, especially if the ships, uh, you know, especially if you're producing out of like four or five docks or something like that. So with all that being said, when you uh, click a TC, you can see this is the network of castles, uh, which is the one that gives you attack speed. And this line right here is the area where if your opponent enters your units, like let's say you have your... <clears throat> let's say you have your units right here, right? Your opponent is entering. The moment the opponent enters, you will hear the, the bells, dim, 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 dim. And you will also get the, the buff. This is the TC auto attack range and this is the network of castles. Now, one thing to remember, I don't th This is only English unique, right? Or am I crazy? But whenever the opponent is close to any of their outposts or TCs, you will hear bells. Or maybe just next to TC, you will hear bells that are very, very loud notifying you that the opponent is nearby. So that's something to note as well. Um, and does this not, does this not say English TC also has higher attack speed, doesn't it? I can't remember what the exact stats are, but I'm pretty sure English TC has, uh, higher stats, which I don't know if it's because of Network of Castle or it's just, uh, it's a double error, right? But it doesn't say in the Civ bonuses. Yeah, so English TC shoots two arrows, so it's the most dangerous TC in the world. Technically, China also has a unique TC fire, but yeah. Now, let's get down to the building. So, I obviously started with all the resources, so I can show you guys all the buildings and stuff. Um, houses, same like most civs, nothing weird there. We'll make a farm right here. And as you can see, this is the influence area. So, this is what I was talking about. You see this influence area where there's like a little plus? Uh, this is where uh, English farms let me actually move to open space. This is where English farms get that bonus. So if you build in the influence area right here, not only you will get 15, 20, 25 and 30 percent faster gather rate on farms, but in Imperial, you will also have um, enclosures that if you build farms under in the influence of the mill, you will also get gold. So obviously, once you complete eight farms, you can build another mill and you can put eight farms there. Now, I do want to show you something. Let me just age up first. I'm going to put that to age up. So technically, you can only fit eight farms uh, or you should be able to fit eight farms. But there are some situations where if you have time, you can actually fit more. And I'll show you guys how. So uh, if you start your farm from here, so not the whole farm needs to be in the range of this, right? You can put it like this, it will still get the bonus. So you can actually fit extra farms this way. And as you can see here, I managed to fit 10 farms compared to the uh, usual mill where you can only fit eight. So this is something that you usually see high level players do. They do this kind of 10 farm setup in the early game because later in the game, you don't really have time to, you know, specifically target fire and position it properly. But whether it's an early, late or mid game, you can also do this uh, on every farm if you'd like to. Uh, basically, you make it a slightly more, I guess, efficient because you need to spend less wood on mills, right? But, you know, uh, it is what it is. So this is the enclosure upgrade. Only available in Imperial. Oh yeah, here we go. Each farm enclosure being worked by a villager generates plus one gold every 3.5 seconds. And this is English only. No other sim has this. Uh, other upgrades in the mill are normal. No bonuses there. I'm going to build uh, a lumber camp and I'm going to build a mining camp here as well. Just to show you uh, basically all their buildings. Um, 
no sieve in the game has any unique lumber uh, camp upgrades. Some sieves can gather more wood, but lumber camp itself uh, has nothing to do with it. Same thing with the mining camp. Uh, there's no sieve that benefits more from a mining camp or less, while there are some variations with the farms. I'm gonna age up immediately to the next age. Because why not? Now let's build some uh, unit production buildings and show you what's unique there and which bonuses and things you can get. Um, another thing is I mentioned the outposts and towers. So whenever you're pushing, let's say the opponent's army is here or enemy base is here, you can build a tower around this area. So let's say your army is here, the opponent's here. You can build a tower here, the outpost. And it, once finished, it will gain the Network of Castles buff. So if your army is here, your opponent's army, army is there and you're fighting, you will get that bonus. Which is why, like I said, you'll see English players often building outposts outside of enemy bases, even when they're attacking, for the sole purpose of getting that, uh, that buff. So, let's check out the production buildings. Let me see if I missed anything. Oh, I want to build a dock as well. Let's talk about dock actually first. So English ships, like I mentioned earlier, are 10% cheaper to produce, but they also have unique upgrades in them. And I'm gonna quickly discuss those. And I'm gonna make a Wingar Palace. Because why not? Okay. So, uh, fishing, sh fishing boats, trade ships, transfer ships uh, are same, like pretty much every sieve. They have galleys, which are actually one of the stronger ships underwater right now. There is a water rework coming to AoE 4 at a point, so depending when you're watching this, it might be changed already. But as it is now in August of 2022, uh, 20, uh, uh, galleys are very, very strong and they can actually beat out hulks if you have same or uh, same numbers or more. Uh, so that's something to to note they're very very good and they're cheaper uh, august september sorry september my bad my bad september um not august it's september right now um yes it's september time travel yeah it's september sorry so uh let's talk about the i'm gonna just make these hulk is the hulk that every sieve has and then you have a demo ship and you have a carrot Build some houses. So the unique upgrades for uh, English are is this one, which uh, is uh, Admi Admiralty, 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 which increases the range of your combat ships by plus one. Now this might not seem like a big deal, but this is actually massive, and it's probably the best uh, ship upgrade in the game. Because if you, let's say if you're both going hulks in castle and your hulks have plus one range, with enough hulks, you will be able to uh, do way more DPS because let's say you have 20 hulks on each side, right, fighting, you will have way more hulks firing at the opponents, uh, at the opponent's hulks, and you will be able to trade out way, way better. And the fact that it's a feudal upgrade is really good because it's not expensive. Uh, and it will also affect your feudal age. So English, uh, Navy, English, uh, uh, water fighting is very, very good. This is the galley and it will beat up uh, most civs boats. It will trade out somewhat even against HRE and it can beat up hulks on water as well, which are the early hulks, I mean, from the French. Now they have a carrick, which few civs have. Um, these boats, these ships suck. Uh, usually, even if you go Imperial, if you want to fight uh, enemy ships and actually beat them, you would preferably go Mass Hulks instead of Mass Carrick because they're much more, um, they're way slower. And if you get caught, you can see they're, they're just super, super slow. They do do uh, great siege damage against buildings. So if you need to destroy any buildings, uh, they're good for that. Now, with that covered, Let's move on to the other production buildings. Meanwhile, I'm going to make a little castle right here. And we're gonna make a siege workshop. I'm just checking if I'm missing anything. Uh, we're gonna make these two as well. There we go. So, 
what else is unique for English specifically. And once I explain these other things, I'll give you guys a general idea of how you want to play English and maybe that fits your playstyle, maybe it doesn't. So first of all, uh, we met, I mentioned that um, English men at arms uh, are produced 50% faster compared to the other sips. Another thing that I did not mention uh, is that there's a unique upgrade for English men at arms called Armor Clad, aka Armor Chad, which increases the range and melee armor of men at arms by plus two, which makes the English men at arms the tankiest men at arm in the game. Uh, especially against uh, range damage, they're extremely, extremely tanky. And combined with the, fast, the fact that they're producing 50% faster, you can just print out so many men at arms that are so incredibly tanky. So you just need some kind of DPS behind them to kind of accompany them. So one of the more popular comps with English is just mass men at arms and longbows or crossbows or siege units or whatever. One thing that it doesn't say anywhere, uh, but that does exist. So if you build spearmen in Dark Age uh, with most sieves, uh, they need to be upgraded to feudal spearmen. But because with English you cannot build spearmen in, in the Dark Age, you can only build men at arms, you get a free upgrade to feudal spearmen the moment you hit feudal. So when you hit feudal with English, if you build spearmen or if you build a barracks, you don't need to upgrade um, spearmen from Dark Age to Feudal, they will already be in Feudal. So technically this is not like a bonus, it's just a, you know, little fact for you guys. Next thing is another unique thing about English is their longbows. They have two unique upgrades as well, um, which I'm going to show you guys. Their cavalry is pretty standard, they don't have any bonuses for cavalry, no uniqueness to them, obviously. Like I said, all their units do get a uh, network of uh, castles uh, attack speed bonus, but there are no unique upgrades for their cavalry. Um, so, let's talk, uh, while the longbows are making, let's talk about the keep. This is the network of citadels. So this is a, a text bug. It says going from 25% to 50. It goes from 20% to 50%. And as you can see here, they can produce units in the keep. So whenever you make a keep, you can produce bombards from it, you can produce trebs, whatever else you want. Um, as long as they're being made. So these are basically archers. So English don't have archers, they have longbows. Um, and longbows have extra range compared to the archers. So if you're engaging longbows into archers, or archers into longbows, longbows will be able to kite and just have massive range difference combined with the attack speed they will do a lot a lot of dps so what else is unique about longbows uh they they can kite pretty well and even if they are playing against you know units that are armored they can actually trade decently into later stages where archers will do a lot less damage against them they have unique upgrades which i'm going to show you guys now uh, they have a setup camp, which is a longbow ability uh, that you unlock. And you basically make a camp, and once you activate it, your longbows will heal inside of that little radius camp. And they have the arrow volley, which um, it's an ability that you also activate. It increases longbow attack speed by 70%. DPS is damage per second, correct. So. This is quite a big buff and this is an Imperial upgrade and obviously this is unique to English because no other Civ has longbows. So I'm going to show you how both of those work. I actually need to take damage from something which I'm not sure if there are wolves because I can't see any. Uh, okay, there's a wolf there. So we're going to go all the way there to take some damage. Um, and another thing that English longbows have is the place palings ability. And once you place these palings, if the, an enemy cavalry charges into you, they're going to be stunned for 2.5 seconds and take 25% damage. So you can select all your longbows and you can click uh, Q, which is the palisade hotkey. And they're all going to start producing the palisade. Boom. So now if you press, now they're on hold position, as you can see, right? So now whatever happens, these longbows are going to be there until you move them. And these palisades will remain there, or palings, sorry, will remain there 
until you move your longbow. So if I move these three, this is going to stay for a little bit, but you can see it will get removed. So if enemy cavalry runs into it, they're going to get stunned for 2.5 seconds and they're going to take damage. So uh, this is something that you can use to uh, prevent the enemy cavalry from engaging into you, which is uh, quite nice. Uh, 12 farms. Um, if you do 12 farms, it becomes very spread out and inefficient. So, do 8 or 10. Now, the last thing that uh, that I want to show you, I guess we need to uh, show the campfire thing. What was that wolf? Uh, here. Uh, this is the attack speed buff. So, left click to reduce the longbow's time between shots by one second which is yes yeah. so if you if i'm gonna click it you'll see attack speed goes from 162 to 062 and i'm not sure actually how long this lasts yeah it, it seems about five or six seconds and then it goes back and then there's a 45 second cooldown so i'm gonna take some damage from this wolf you cannot activate uh, campfire unless your units are damaged, just so you guys know. So for example, this guy cannot activate it because he's full health. So if you look, I can't activate with any other longbow, but this longbow will be able to activate it. And once you do, if your longbows are in this uh, little circle, all the longbows will be healing uh, at a rate, I think, one per second. So, if you're doing any kind of feudal longbow push or even later in the game, you can heal your units or heal your longbows like this. And if you leave the, the zone, it will disappear. And this does not work in combat. Okay, just so you guys know. So, you cannot activate these in combat. Like, if your opponent is engaging you, you can't just pop the healing and just stay there and heal at the same time. So, yeah. Uh, next thing. Their blacksmith upgrades are all normal. They don't have any unique upgrades in blacksmith. Uh, same thing for their university. They have pretty standard upgrades. Nothing too crazy. And the last thing about English uh, is the Siege Workshop, which they do have unique upgrades. Uh, and they have a kind of like a unique unit, but not really. It's not unique to them. It's unique to a couple of sieves, which is Ribaldequin. Um, this is a siege unit that deals splash damage in pretty much very close melee range to counter enemy infantry or cavalry it has low ranged armor it has short range but it hits multiple targets so yeah now this is the unique upgrade that english have and that is shattering projectiles so trebuchets projectile shatter on impact increasing their area of effect so most civs use trebuchets to destroy keeps, destroy towers, destroy buildings, destroy walls. Uh, you will see English very often in the late game have six, seven, eight trebuchets, and not only they will use it to destroy towers or keeps, but they're also going to just aim move them sometimes and or even target fire your hand cannoneers or ranged units because with shattering projectiles, they will do splash damage once they hit. This splash damage is not as massive as like Mangonel or Nest of Bees, but it is splash damage and trebuchets, trebuchets have massive range. So it's obviously a pretty good thing to, to use, especially if your trebuchets get 50% attack speed, uh, they're gonna be able to do quite a lot of DPS in the long run. Now, let's talk about landmarks for English, which is something I did not discuss, but we will quickly go through them. Um, in age 2 you have a option between council hall and uh, abbey of uh, what is it called is it abbey of kings i know it is abbey of memes yeah it's called abbey of memes because it's not very used so council hall is a military landmark where you can produce your longbows so you basically don't need uh archer ranges as english is in feudal because you will have council hall but you can only produce longbows so you cannot produce crossbows you cannot produce hand cannoneers and what it does is it also produces longbowmen at 100 percent speed so longbows from council hall are produced in seven seconds so if you look if i produce from normal archer range it's going to take uh 15 seconds you can see it's going pretty slow 
if I start producing from council hall, you'll see that the production is much, much quicker. So it's very good if you want to do any kind of rush, but also if you want to do any kind of uh, defensive, defensive gameplay. So the other landmark, Abbey of the Memes, aka Abbey of the Kings, is a landmark that has no upgrades. It serves no other purpose except it heals your units that are damaged around it and I think 6.5 health per second if I'm not mistaken the numbers might be off but it's basically like a healing center now the reason why this isn't used is because it doesn't work in combat so you usually make it at home and what you have to do is you micro your low HP units back so if you have a lot of APM if you have a lot of uh, multitasking and you want to micro your low HP units back in order to heal them that's something that you can go for but then you're gonna have to build archer ranges if you want longbows and you're kind of more exposed in the feudal age and the most common strategy to use Abbey of the Kings is to rush castle go knights and then be able to attack your opponent and whenever your knight gets low you send it back to heal up now H3 landmarks, one of them is King's Palace and the other one is the White Tower. King's Palace is literally a TC, uh, a town center. So this is a landmark that is more common with English. You age up with King's Palace, you get another town center and you can kind of extend it and boom your economy even more. On the other side you have the White Tower which basically serves as a keep. Um, it's a keep in castle and you can, you know, if you're getting all in or if you're getting pressured and you don't think you'll survive, you can go to White Tower, uh, like let's say here, they if you're on, getting attacked from on. that side, try to finish it. And then that will give you a massive like damage increase if the enemy is fighting there. Plus you can produce uh, all the units just like you can from the keep. You can also produce the units from the White Tower. So, um, H4 landmarks. Uh, there are two. There's Berkshire Palace, which is basically like the White Tower, but better. It's just a keep that, that has massive range, can be upgraded with Bombard and Sprinkled Emplacements. Acts as a keep. It will give that attack speed aura around uh, units around it. But um, that's it. Like There's nothing else special about it. It's a keep. It acts as a keep. And the other one that is more popular is the Wingard Palace. Now, what Wingard Palace does, this is obviously, you know, it's unique to English. Every landmark is unique to, to the save, right? So what Wingard Palace does is you have three different options of unit production. So uh, it takes one in minute and 15 seconds to complete. And you basically pay uh, for this one 100 food, 100 wood and 200 gold. And you get one longbow, one spearman, one man-at-arm, one knight and one trebuchet. So I can't remember the exact amount, but I think you get like 800, seven or 800 resources for free when you create this, right? So when this comes out, you paid 400 resources, but you're gonna get so, so, so much more. To put in perspective, only trebuchet costs 750 resources, right? And this costs 400 and you're getting a trebuchet. So if this just produced a trebuchet, you would already be getting value. But this produces a spearman, a longbow, man at arm, and a knight to go along with it. And it's one of the best landmarks in the game uh, for its value. If you don't need siege, if you don't want that mix of units, you can also produce an army of three horsemen and three knights for the cost of 200, 100. Or you can produce uh, an army of three crossbows, three hand cannons, uh, if again you don't need these first two. They're about to pop out, so you'll see when it comes out. Boom, right there. And that only costs 400 resources, so it's a very cost-efficient landmark into in the late game and, and just a very good thing to have. Like I said, uh, you can have a Berkshire as well, which is a defensive keep uh, if you're in trouble or maybe you're trying to secure a location, but that's about it. Now, so what is the general, now that I've explained and hopefully you guys learned uh, more or maybe, uh, you know, even if you play English, maybe you learned something new. So what is the general play style of English and unit comps? Uh, general play style of English right now is uh, you can be aggressive and feudal with longbows because that's your feudal age, uh, you know, advantage. You can also produce men at arms and longbows, which a lot of civs cannot. 
and you can be aggressive with like spearman man at arm longbow in feudal age you can go for double tc and go more uh macro uh oriented gameplay you can go 2 tc into aggression you can go 2 tc into castle and then you get a third tc with um with king's palace and then you can fight in castle and that is completely up to you you can go into knights you can go in whatever you want as far as that goes it's very uh it has a lot of options the weakness i guess of english is it doesn't have any uh massive eco bonuses they do have farms but the farms only really really kick in into imperial when you can also get gold with them which is where english is super super strong uh, earlier than that, it, you get a safe food source, which is an advantage over other sieves. Like I said, as English, you don't want to go around the map and gather, like, you know, deer, unless you're placing TC on it. So you don't want to go around the map and, and get food. You can just transition to uh, early farms as English, and that's what most players do. So your playstyle in general can be aggressive and feudal, but you can also go for more macro-oriented play and kind of try to survive till Imperial where you will have an edge uh, over your opponents. In Castle, you can go for uh, playstyles such as Mass Knights with Longbows. So you basically go Mass Knights to uh, be aggressive, to attack your opponent, and they will respond with Spears and Crossbows. And then you'll have Longbows that counter both of those units. So you can go, like I said, Knight um, Longbow comp, you can go for mass infantry, you can go for mass men at arms and longbows and crossbows behind it as like a DPS, and you have men at arms as a fodder because they're very tanky with the armor chat upgrade that they have. Um, or you can play English completely like campy and just kind of secure one part of the map uh, at a time with a keep, and then slowly push out and kind of wall off the map, and you can try to force your opponent to be engaging into like mass siege wars which english is very good at because not only they have 50 percent attack speed on their siege but they will also um get trebuchet that can Ill a deal aoe damage and together with farms in imperial that generate gold and greeninger palace that is very cost efficient uh it's very hard to trade against english effectively so I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I want to mention with English, but I think I have covered pretty, pretty much everything. Uh, it's very important to, uh, with English, no matter where you're expanding your gold or where you're attacking, it's very important to have a tower, an outpost, a keep, something to give you the network of citadels or network of castles, depending on which uh, stage in the game you're at, to give you that bonus because your units uh, I mean, if you have 30 units and you get 50% attack speed bonus, it's quite an insane uh, a damage boost to your, to your whole army. So, that is it. Um, if you want to know more about unique uh, things regarding each matchup with English, I have covered that in my guide videos for Season 1 and Season 2. Or sorry, in Season 2 guide, I have covered... Uh, the matchups and in general your general play style versus each sieve so if that's something you're interested in you can check it out there but I would like to uh, know your opinion if I if you you know don't know anything don't know something you can ask now in Twitch chat or you can leave a comment in the YouTube video and I will try my best to help you and answer you guys but um, again this is not a build order guide this is basically everything and every trick you can uh, you need or can know about english um so hopefully i've covered everything if you did enjoy this kind of video and this kind of content i'll do seven more for each of the other sieves where they have you know their own unique stuff their own bonuses i'll explain i'll explain all the unique units unique upgrades and so on and so forth so uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to ask any questions. If you watched on Twitch, let's keep going.